It's time for a late and not so great Elimination Chamber 2015. The Dropkick. We are back only four weeks late to cover the Elimination Chamber. I'm Matthew Kershaw, joined by Carl Shimon. No, you're not. Am I not? No, you're joined by fucking Mayo Mouth over here. God, May I should have sorted this out before we started. Mayonnaise is a gender, Kyle. Do not. <laughs> My mouth is filled with gender. That. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, it is. So while you deal with this white liquid flying out of your mouth, I'm going to run through the pre-show really quick. It's more because... sticking to the roof of my mouth is the problem. <laughs> it's more just like there's like a thin layer of white stuff all around my... Ugh. Carry well, on, you carry on. spit and not swallow next time. <laughs> anyway, the pre-show, everybody's favourite part. I know it's your favourite part. You're so hyped up about it, you can't even talk about it, so I'll do it for you. <laughs> Fair enough. We we had the amazing bout of Zack Ryder versus Stardust. Hot. They're the two hottest superstars. Yes. Uh. Whatever. Cody Rhodes. No. Cody awesome. Rhodes didn't win. Zack Ryder won. That's right. No. <laughs> no, he didn't. Stardust won. I love how <laughs> this is how the entire thing's going to be, isn't it? It's like it's that long ago. We can't remember what happened. I don't know Who if you won? know this, but this entire show was just a big clusterfuck of nobody knowing what's happening. Uh, there was... <laughs> yeah, I can't but, uh, wait. I can't wait. Yeah, this match, uh, whatever, the best thing to take out of this is uh, the commentary saying that Ambrose being champion is like the Hindenburg. <laughs> oh, that's right! And uh, Jerry the King Lawler was talking, and he just said that women like men were big, throbbing vocabularies. Oh god. I fucking yep. pulled a, some great quotes out of his latest stunts in the pay-per-view <laughs> of last uh, week. But After this, there was an interview segment with Lana backstage talking to Tom Phillips, who seems to shrink every time he interviews people. Weird. Uh, she said that Ziggler shows her, shows her his selfies, his Snapchats, and then she just kind of stopped <laughs> before saying anything else. And uh, yeah. to close the interview, she said she was hashtag free and then walked away. Weird. Is she still <laughs> doing the Russian accent or not? Yes, she is. It's pretty bad. Bizarre. But that is not the only thing that happened on the pre-show. This was packed full of quality entertainment, Kyle. <laughs> I'm so sorry I miss it all the time. So The Miz came out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> How's he doing? How's the Marine 4 selling? Oh, The Miz is killing me. I'm going to die just trying to talk about this. The Miz came out. He was wearing this awful, awful coat. It was pretty bad. I know you liked his coat. Is it one of the ones where it's like the zip is somehow massive S-shaped down his, down his crotch? No, it's even weird. And he has like the hood over his hair now. It's it's really oh, dumb. Awesome. He's like a but, Sith uh, warlord. Yeah, but not as cool. But... Uh, Basically, Daniel Bryan came out for an interview. He got a big pop, quote unquote, for Corpus Christi, who seemed to chop off their hands to enter the arena. Right. And if you notice this, the entire pay per view, they are just quiet. Uh, um, nope. The crowd were chanting for Daniel Bryan, and Miz just like jumped out of his chair and shouted, When my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, The Miz is so good at just making you want to hate him. He's amazing. He is. He was He's there, the best at it. He was there saying that he made Daniel Bryan, and his his injury makes him look bad, <laughs> which is awesome. uh, pretty funny. Bryan uh, shilled his book real quick. He has a uh, book. Is it any yeah, good? Yeah, he he wrote a book. I don't know. I've not read it. Oh, you can't read, so <laughs> no, I can't. Look uh, forward to a book review in about four months' time. <laughs> After shilling his book, the Miz was telling him to uh, shill more. He went, you're the face of five-hour energy. You should be out here drinking your five-hour energy right now. These, <laughs> these schmucks will buy anything you sell. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's not all. Awesome. Then, guess whose music hits? Uh, right. <laughs> There's too many shit superstars, I don't know. Macho Mandow and Axel Mania storm what? down to the ring and take out the Miz. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why would anyone write that? 
it was actually pretty good. I freaked out when their music hit because I was like, "Thank God, something's happening." <laughs> Oh, but that was the end of the pre-show. Uh, that sounds more interesting than most of what's on the uh, on the agenda here today. Yes, it is, and now I'm going to have to read out this big long list for the first match of the show. So it was the tag team elimination chamber match where the New Day, Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods faced off against the Lucha Dragons, Kalisto and Sin Cara, against Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, against the primetime players Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, against the Ascension Conan and Victor. Who? Connor and Victor of the Ascension. <laughs> I don't believe you. They're not names. Versus the Lost Matadores, Diego and Fernando. It's fucking Ganon and Dorf, <laughs> where I come from. Ganon and Dorf, yeah. Yeah, this this entire thing was a big mess. Oh, uh, but it was great. It was beautiful it was at times. The bull, little uh, Lost Matadores bull, walked in and he sat on top of the chamber. Yeah. Which, for some reason, all three of the New Day went into one pod. It was pretty good. Just some hot action in there. Yeah. Steaming up the glass. Uh, to start the match off, it was an NXT rematch between the Ascension and the Lucha Dragons, which was kind of cool. Yeah, it was... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't really have any notes <laughs> at all for this. <laughs> uh, because the crowd was so quiet, you could hear them all calling spots in the middle of the ring. Like, nice. I could hear Connor going, Kick me again! Kick me again! <laughs> uh, sure. There was this cool moment where the Lucha Dragons climbed up on top of the pods, and uh, Sin Cara did a, uh, a, swan a senton bomb right. off the top of the pod onto one of the Ascension, and then Kalisto like stayed on top of the pods, and like he couldn't get his balance, and then the New Day like pulled his leg into oh, their God. chamber because he was stood on top of their chamber. It was weird. It was like tw it was like I felt like ten minutes of just him flailing on top of this pod, getting his nuts smashed up against the chain. Yeah, I don't think that was supposed to happen. I think that he was, like, fucking up there. Yeah, it was It was weird. <laughs> it's so but, awkward uh, to watch. Yeah. Uh, who were next to come in? Was it... Cesaro, wasn't it? Yeah, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd came in, and they looked awesome. They, Cesaro they hit always this... do. They always Cesar... do. Yeah, Cesaro hit this brutal superplex from the top of the pod onto Kalisto, and then... Uh... Tyson Kidd just jumped off the ropes and gave him an elbow yeah. while he was on the ground. It was awesome. Uh, I think someone some, called it a uh, super-duperplex. Yeah, a super-duperplex, that's it. Uh, for yeah. some reason, uh, Jerry the King Lawler calls Michael Cole JR. And yeah, they I, have, like, I have the words JR written down with a question mark. I didn't know what it was. He was the old commentator for Raw, and everybody wants him back. Oh, Jim Ross. He was yeah. really good. Yeah, Jim Ross. And then yeah. they spent like five minutes bickering about that instead of calling the match. <laughs> it's more uh, interesting than that way. Yep. Yeah, uh, Los Matadores came in and El Torito hit an awesome Hurricane Rana from the top of the cell. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was pretty cool. Uh, Weird. Kalisto climbed up onto the roof of the chamber. And again, he kind of took ten minutes to kind of get his balance before dropping unimpressively onto everybody. <laughs> He just kind of hung there for a while, didn't he? Just like flexing his arms, <laughs> yeah, and then dropped <laughs> sucking silently into this, uh, into this massive body that all fell over like dominoes. It was so awkward. Everybody was just looking up at him, holding their arms out to catch him. <laughs> yeah, but it was followed up by that awesome. Uh, what's the fucking ball's name? El Torito. El Torito. Like destroyed Sin Cara in a really weird and over, overdone kind of way. Did he? I don't know if you remember, but Cesaro basically like cartwheeled out of the ring. It was uh, kind of bizarre. I don't remember. I remember the Ascension picking up El Torito and throwing him over the ropes into one of the... I think it was Kalisto on the outside on the chamber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it's they cool. hit the Fall of Man and they eliminated Most Ma Los Matadores. And then they took out the Lucha Dragons by doing the same thing to Kalisto. Yeah. Is uh, that when uh, the primetime players came out? Yes, primetime players came in and just killed the Ascension. I don't I, remember. I what strictly they remember did. Titus O'Neil just rolling around against the cage for a while at the beginning. I yeah, I don't remember. Like I said, this was like four weeks ago. I don't remember what <laughs> happened exactly. We should probably have watched it again to like you know. No, fuck you! I'm not watching that shit again. <laughs> um, Darren Young was on top of the ropes and Cesaro hit a beautiful uh, drop kick on him, which was really cool. Yeah. 
there was a brutal superplex slash power bomb move from the top corner. I'll take your word for it. Yep. Uh, there was one guy in the crowd chanting, "This is awesome," and nobody else yeah. was joining in with him. Good. Yep. Uh, I, I enjoyed Kalisto fucking up. It was that was pretty <laughs> awesome in itself. Oh, Kalisto's so cool though. He is. He is fucking lucha. Uh, after this, the New Day run in, and the primetime players plus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro did a superplex to all three members of the New Day. Yeah, it was like a fucking scrum in the middle of it, wasn't it? It was really weird. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro locked Xavier Woods inside their pod again, and by lock, I just mean they closed the door on him. <laughs> It's got no handles on it. I mean, how are you going to get out? Yep. Uh, so, it looked like Cesaro and Kid were on a roll. They were about to... I think they did the swing and the drop kick to Tyson... No. Kofi, wasn't it? Yes, they did to Kofi and they were about to pin him. And then Darren Young rolls up Cesaro and pins him. Isn't it always Kofi? I don't know. Are you being racist and saying all black people look the same? No, I feel like every week it's Kofi Kingston though that gets fucking uh, swung around in circles. Probably, yeah. But he can't exactly do it on Big E, can you? Come on. I mean, he's done it before. He's done it to, like, the great Carly before. Jesus. Oh, but, that's a uh, big yeah. show. Just Darren fucking Young. fat rolling across the ring. Carry, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> Darren Young pins Cesaro, so Cesaro and Tyson Kidd are out. So then it's yeah. the new day against the primetime players. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I watch pay-per-views for this kind of yep. uh, hot match. The New Day threw Tyson... Oh, I keep saying Ty, Tyson. It's Titus O'Neil's head through the chamber wall. I can't take his fucking... Right, are people generally called Titus anywhere but, like, anime? I don't think so. It's like anime in ancient Rome, the only kind of places where Titus is okay. I don't know if you've seen Titus O'Neil. He looks like an anime character. <laughs> I guess. He's very shiny. He's cool. He is. You can see his shiny head with his when it was lodged through the steel chains. Oh, it looked so sore. I was like, I just imagine your ear getting wrenched off. Yep. God. But uh, basically the end of this uh, match was basically Big E and Titus O'Neil having like a strong off by hitting brutal moves before Kofi Kingston hit a trouble in paradise onto Titus O'Neil. All of the New Day jumped on top of him and then they pinned him Yep. to retain their championship. And then one of the commentators made a uh, Sepp Blatter corruption joke, which I found hilarious being wrestling. <laughs> but, you know, fair enough. Yeah. What did you rate this match? Uh, I feel almost ashamed. I apparently gave it a four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not having watched it recently, I can't put up a valiant defense of that. So I uh... gave it two and three quarters. Oh. God, these fucking matches. I'm just having flashbacks as I'm reading what's next. Yep, yeah, everybody's favorite. The Divas match was on next. Nikki uh, Bella versus Paige uh, versus Naomi. Uh, for the WWE Divas Championship. Fuck. My, own, my first note is, her shoes are blue. I guess that was Naomi entering. I've got Naomi boob frills, question mark. That's <laughs> my first. <laughs> she had those fucking weird, like, almost cupcake frills. On the, on the top of a bra. That was I, I don't fucking remember. weird. All I remember is uh, Naomi hit Paige so hard her extensions fell out of her hair. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, Nikki hit an Alabama slammer on somebody. I haven't got that written down yet. The rest of the match was just botching moves over and over <laughs> and over again. Like, there was a botched Tower of Doom. There was a botched <laughs> Hurricane Rana where Paige landed on her head. <laughs> Again, the crowd was so quiet, you could hear them talking to each other in the ring. I don't even know who was in this match. I didn't even write that down. Nikki, Bella, Paige, and Naomi. Why was the three of them? Because uh, Paige was supposed to face Nikki Bella at the last pay-per-view, but right. Naomi turned heel and attacked her, so then she wasn't able to make it. So then Naomi faced Nikki Bella, and Naomi failed to win, and then Paige came back, and now it's a three-way weird so i had never watched uh an elim elimination chamber before so i was super weirded out when there was no more chamber i was like well that's a bummer you do not want divas inside a chamber maybe i do just obscure some of that shit a bit more just make it look like the moves hit that way with the cage bars in the way it, it might have made this match better this match was just terrible it was botched uh it ended when nikki hit a rack attack on somebody and pinned them 
Yep, I, I gave it a two out of five. Oh my god. <laughs> Is that too high for you? I gave it a one. Well, yeah, I'm an optimistic kind of dude, you know. I like the to Alabama it. Slammer is what gave it the one there. I, I don't know, the cupcake boob frills are pretty cool. And she always has light up shoes, so that's awesome. That's a good point. But now it's time for the big match. John but Cena versus them. Kevin Owens. Yep, yep, yep. Is, is yeah, that all was... you're going to say, yep? Uh, I'm j- <sighs> you should begin, because uh, these notes are not in a way that I would have written them. All right. Uh... I have the word Autobots underlined halfway down the page. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 basically, God. despite how c- quiet Corpus Christi crowd is, they popped big for John Cena, which isn't a surprise. And then Kevin Owens came down and everyone was shouting, fight Owens fights. Do people actually like Cena? Or is it just us that don't? It's how does that work? It's kids that like John Cena. And do they just populate the crowd with like screaming kids? They don't populate matches. the crowd. They go there anyway to see Cena. God. You just get blood back in the ring and get those kids out of there. That's why you hear, like, let's go Cena in high, so high pitched that dogs can hear them down the roads. And then the rebuttal, <laughs> Cena sucks, is so deep because it's all the men in the crowds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, the match begins and you can hear Cena calling spots so fucking loud, like, two seconds in. Why does he do it? Is he just because he's loud naturally? I don't know. <laughs> it seems like oh. every pay per view we I catch Cena shouting out loud. Do you reckon like the other wrestlers like thanks Cena for reminding me what I've got to do or genuinely like shut the fuck up you're making this look terrible? I I don't know. Bizarre. It's fucking weird. But uh, and they say wrestling's fake. I fuck. know. It's not fake when you hear Cena go like uh go for the tackle, and then he gets up, and he runs into the ropes, and then Kevin Owens tackles him. <laughs> but, uh, basically, Cena went to hit the five moves of Doom early in the match, and Kevin Owens just caught him, and slammed him to the ground, and then Cena was talking loudly again. Yeah. Uh, Owens goes for the pop-up power bomb, and Cena reverses it into the five moves of Doom. Sure. Uh, I think when as did the Autobots to... happen? I, I don't know. I... Maybe when Cena's running to hit, running at him to hit the second shoulder tackle, I think Kevin Owens reverses it into the pop-up powerbomb. Right. Like five minutes into the match, it was awesome, but That's it awesome. only got a two count. Yeah. Uh, Owens went, hit a, went to hit a moonsault off the top rope, and uh, John Cena rolled out of the way, hit his own finishing move, the AA, and only got a two count. Yep. Uh... Kevin Owens hit the five knuckle shuffle, which was pretty cool, but then Cena reversed it into the STF. I'm I, I'm trying to find notes that I can like drop in there, but everything is kind of yeah. It's uh, this was a this was a great match, but it's been so long since I've seen it that I don't remember much what happens. It was, uh, but I've got things like six super kick written down. Like, what does that mean in the context oh, of having a discussion about it? Oh yeah, um, after. Owens got out of the STF. No. No, wait, no. At some point, the, somebody kicked somebody, and it was yeah, cool. Yes, Co- Kevin Owens hit a super kick on Cena, but I don't remember where about that is. I have that note down as well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, whatever, we'll move past it. Uh, Kevin Owens hit John Cena's finishing move, the AA, and only got a two count. Uh, Cena hit a tornado DDT and only got a two count. <laughs> Uh, Cena hit the top rope leg drop onto Owens and tried to crush his head. Oh, was that in the back of the head thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking weird. I don't think I've ever seen Cena do that move in, like, years outside of, like, WWE games. Oh, well, that's cool. You know, bit of variety. It was. uh, Kevin Owens pulled out the massive cock tease and went to hit uh, Cena with the package pile driver, but turned it into a powerbomb instead. Yep. Like, I was freaking out when I saw him pick up, like, it's like the pedigree where he gets his arms and then lifts him up. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember But instead it. of, like, dropping him on his head, he hit him into a powerbomb. And I remember jumping out of my chair screaming, holy shit! <laughs> but no, he hit a powerbomb instead, which sucked. Uh, again, Cena talked a bit too much. Uh, there was a messy springboard stunner, which Cena always seems to do now, which I don't like. Right. 
because it never looks good. Like he always like fucks it up with the person he's hitting. Nothing he does look good. Like there's so many times, so many of my notes are just like camera catches him missing, and like <laughs> some when he slapped on the floor next to uh, Owens because the camera's at the wrong angle. Yeah, it's, uh, there was a terrible. There terrible. was a brutal super. It, yeah, it was a brutal superplex from the top rope by Kevin Owens onto Cena. Uh, was that the hit... one he reversed? Like, Owens was uh, setting up there and he reversed it? Yes. Am I making that up? Yeah. I yeah. thought it was a brain buster at first, but I had to watch the replay to see it, it was a superplex. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, they pulled out like a brain buster on WWE, that's amazing. <laughs> but no, uh, Kevin Owens hit a senton and only got a two count. There was some... Brutal clotheslines by Cena onto Owens that the replays kept showing over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, Cena went to hit the five moves of Doom. Kevin Owens picked him up. Pop up power bomb. One, two, three. Kevin Owens wins his first match in WWE against a 15 time champion. It was awesome. Holy shit. I again freaked the fuck out when he won. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. And then I it would have been weird to have him not win, though, wouldn't it? It would. Like, what would but have been the point in it? This is John Cena. You didn't expect him to win. No, no, I guess not. I went from like super happy that Kevin Owens beat John Cena in his first match to really angry when, as soon as he gets the free count, John Cena rolls out of the ring and then walks to the back. <laughs> it's like, fuck you. Yeah. But, uh... It was. Uh, I give that a four out of five. It was really good. I, I also gave it a 4 it. out of 5. It was probably the best match of the night. Compared to this next thing, it was like fucking heaven. Oh, hang on. Uh, after the match, Kevin Owens picked up a microphone and said, uh, whatever, when I debuted on Raw, I said anybody who doesn't know me isn't worth my time. Well, now everybody knows me, and then walks out. Yeah. Which he was pretty good, cool. I thought. He's pretty good, because normally I don't like him on the mic, because he, he's weird, but... What do you mean he's weird? He's uh, he sounds really not into it, you know. He sounds really flat and monotone, like he shouldn't be uh, cutting, cutting promos. Is that just because of his accent? Maybe, but I don't think it really matters. Like he just sounds bored, well, which I guess French... works sometimes. But well, he's French Canadian, and his his English is his second language. Yeah, I, it's just like the whole family thing doesn't super work. He's like, I'm gonna win for my family. He's like, nobody believes you. You don't even believe this yourself. It's I a... believe it. His his son, Owen Owens... Dude, Owens. you would fucking empathise with, like, a table if you thought I had emotions. You would agree with anything these people say. His, uh, his performance no, I... that night, though, was, it was good. His whole character, even in the indies, was about his family. Like, his son, Owen, or Owens, is a massive John Cena fan. Oh, God. And build, building up to this match, he was saying, I'm going to destroy John Cena to prove to my son that he isn't a role model for him. <laughs> nice. And there's uh, there's a video online I I don't remember where it is of their his wife and their son watching the match and like right. she filmed him as he won and the kids reaction like he sat there holding like this Cena plushy toy and he's there going <laughs> he won just like yeah. losing his mind that he beat John Cena in a happy way or not uh, he seemed happy oh, he good. seemed more like bewildered that he was able to beat his hero. And now he's got to go and repaint his Cena plushie into a fucking Owens plushie. Yep. But, uh... Can you talk about the next match? I don't have much notes for this. I've got... like I've got three lines written down. Hang on, what match is it? This is Neville versus Dallas. Dallas. Texas. Dallas. Who killed Roger Ebert? What's the guy's name? I don't know. My American TV from the 70s. I don't know. Bo Dallas versus... Bo Neville. Dallas versus Neville. The man that gravity forgot... So my first line is Bo Fat question mark, which I write. <laughs> I believe I love Bo Dallas. You're right, he is kind of fat, but it's kind of cool. Uh, there was a sick ass moonsault on the outside by uh, Neville, like he's on the top rope and he just hits a moonsault onto Bo Dallas outside. I think I went for a piss and I came back and I missed a bunch of it because my next note is JBL shouting, "Take that, internet troll!" King calling Cole JR again, and then a kid in the crowd shouting, You suck, Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas went to hit the Bo Dog, it was reversed into an Inseguri, and then Neville hit the Red Arrow for the win. I gave this a 2. 
yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say about this match. After the match, there was a backstage segment with Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose, because of course Roman Reigns has to be on this pay-per-view in some form. Oh, of course, of course. Yep. Uh, Always. He's the, he's the one that rakes in all the money for them, so got to get yep. him on camera as much as possible. Clearly. Uh, yeah, basically, the I think Triple H came, come out, came out and he was like, yeah, if you get involved in this match, Roman, Dean's going to get disqualified. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told you, yeah. I didn't know what the fuck you were on about, but now I remember. Now I remember the matches that happened this time around. Yep. Uh, I'd forgotten so everything. After that was the second big clusterfuck of the night. Sheamus versus Ryback versus R-Truth versus King Barrett versus a surprise entrant to replace uh, Rusev versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. This was the worst. So, uh, Daniel Bryan was at ringside for the Intercontinental Championship. He had to vacate. The first person to walk down, who could replace Rusev? Mark Henry. Yep. Yep. I don't know. I've never seen him wrestle before tonight, so what do you want from me? <laughs> oh, you've had a great first impression then. Uh, I always King seem Barrett to get him and... in, uh, in like matches I play on WWE 14. I always seem to have Mark Henry versus Dolph Ziggler. It was bizarre. Yep. Uh, this match begins with King Barrett and Dolph Ziggler. They have like a fight. R Truth comes in and Bad News Barrett kills him immediately. He like rushes into the chamber and starts beating the shit out of R Truth. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Barrett throws Ziggler into Mark Henry's glass, the indestructible pods, the indestructible Lexan, and it just falls out. <laughs> and Mark Henry's like, ah, fuck it, I'll just come in. Yeah. I wonder if that was planned, do you think, or not? It wasn't planned. Right. Because the rest of this match is Mark Henry standing around, not doing anything, because he wasn't <laughs> supposed to come in yet. <laughs> And this sets the tone for the rest of this match. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Henry just kind of stands there as Ziggler, or truth and Barrett fights. There was a bull hammer into super kick into lie detector, question mark? I don't know what any of them are, so yeah, sure. I think they're all three finishing moves of everybody in there except Mark Henry. Right. Uh... There was a moment where you hear Dolph Ziggler shout, Stay there, Mark, as Mark Henry stands in the corner, <laughs> awkwardly. <laughs> I didn't catch that. That's awesome. Uh, the Oh, Ryback is in by this point, because there's an awkward standoff for like a good minute or so. He's the um, worst. No, he isn't now. in yet. He isn't in yet, sorry. Mark Henry's in this standoff before they start beating the crap out of each other. Right. Uh, the... Bell hits and Seamus tries to enter, but his door is locked, and there's a big fuss about how is he going to get out. I didn't get that. Nothing about that part made sense. So, I'll explain that when we come to it. So basically, uh, R Truth, Dolph Ziggler, and Ryback start taking out Mark Henry. Mark, yeah, yeah. I think Ryback's in by now. He Again, was, this yeah. match is. This match is such a clusterfuck, I don't even know when Ryback entered. <laughs> it was but, that memorable. Uh, yeah. Uh, there were lots of boring chants. Yeah. Th that pretty much sums up this match. This was the kind of match where I get try to get fiddly with the uh, progress bar on the on the streaming. I try to like inch it forward a couple of minutes, but it's so shitty, it just always seems to go back. Yeah. It's so, one of those uh, kind of matches. By this point, I'm pretty sure Ryback... Not Ryback, uh... But Barrett is out. Yes. Like I think Barrett I think Barrett is eliminated by the bullhammer into super kick into lie detector question mark. Yeah, I think he was out before the uh, Seamus Door thing happened. Yeah, I'm pretty so, sure. So in the ring is Mark Henry, Ryback, R Truth, and Ziggler. Yes. Yes. So uh Seamus finally reveals his master ruse where he put his Celtic cross into the door to stop him from opening. Oh, right. I thought the idea was that he had picked the lock using the cross. No, that's just it. The commentary <laughs> fucked up. Like, they were making a big fuss of how is he going to get out if he's locked in there. And yeah. it turns out that he did it on purpose to right. remain out of the match while the others eliminate each other. But the commentary fucked up by going, did he just pick the lock? Yeah, I thought, I was like, what the fuck? Like, he pulls this massive cross out of the door hinge. And I'm like, bizarre, bizarre. Yeah. 
again, this match was just awful. Hen Mark Henry gets eliminated at some points. Uh, I'm sure that happened. Bas basically, the final two are Sheamus and Ryback, is all yeah. you need to know. I think and Dolph right destroyed another pod, didn't he, before he went out? I don't remember. Didn't he get thrown into Sheamus' pod and break the door on that one, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. Uh, my, my note here is fucking Sheamus and Ryback, dot, dot, dot. Hmm. So, uh, Sheamus hits the white noise onto the steel floor onto Ryback. Uh, Ryback botches, throwing Sheamus over the ropes. Yeah. Uh, and then, I guess, at some point, Ryback picks up Sheamus, hits him with the um, shell shock, and pins him. Sure. <laughs> My note is, wow, Ryback wins. Fuck. I had why question mark written down. <laughs> why would why why Ryback? I don't know. Why not I, like give it? It's a shit title. Why not just give it to somebody who like they want to do something with? Well, they want to do something with Ryback now. Like when Ryback was making his entrance into this match, the commentary were like, "Ryback met a small child in a gas station. The child asked, why do the bad guys win?'" And Ryback promised him that he would win this match. That's the story? That's the kind of level of writing they're using nowadays? Yeah, that was the whole thing. So uh, the chamber lifts up and... But why? Daniel Bryan... Fuck it. <laughs> Daniel Bryan walks into the ring with the title and says that there's no better champion than Ryback. Oh, sorry, he says THE Ryback and then hands him the championship and the mic. <laughs> and, then, and then Ryback turns to Daniel Bryan and goes, Thank you, Dan. Weird. It's pretty good. Weird. And that closes off. Ryback is the new Intercontinental Champion. Why would they not give it to Sheamus, though? Like, they're trying to do shit with Sheamus. That's what I... Well, we know what happens with Sheamus. Now. I know they're trying to do shit with Sheamus. Did they not know at this point? It's only, like, I, two weeks beforehand. I assumed that Sheamus was going to win this match and be the Intercontinental Champion. It would have made sense. Like... Yeah, I mean, what did you give this match? Oh, I, did, I forgot to rate it, but probably, like, a two... I also gave no, it a two. I gave it. I definitely gave it a two. Yeah, it's definitely down. Yeah, well, well. Uh, again, I don't have any problem with Ryback. I don't see why he's the champion, but whatever. I think he's super fucking boring. Is my problem with him, personally. So we'll we'll break like kayfabe here and be like, yeah, this we've already we already know what happens at Money in the Bank, and I've been watching the roars after this. Ryback is now super over with the crowds. Really. Yeah, like, the Raw before Money in the Bank, he picked up the Big Show and gave him a shell shock, and the entire crowd were shouting, feed me more, at him. Well, they, they do that like, anyway, though, don't they? Like, the moment he's in a corner of the ring, they start chanting. Yeah, but, like, more than usual, and they were, like, super loud. Weird. So Weird. Obviously, like... Him. He's so bad, though. Like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after this match, there is a advert for Money in the Bank, which is two weeks away, where they've announced that Cena versus Owens in a rematch. Yeah, yeah. And my question is, why Kevin Owens beat Cena clean, 1-2-3, why is there now a rematch? Because he didn't really. Of course not, John Cena has to get his win back. Yeah, absolutely. And then absolutely. they announced that the Money in the Bank ladder match would have Dolph Ziggler, Neville, Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, Kofi Kingston and Sheamus awesome. in it. Awesome. <laughs> I skipped this part, but I can imagine your reaction. Yep. Uh, so we're now on to the main event of Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Yep. You uh, you start running through this, and I'll just uh, I'll have to step out for just a second, and I'll be back by the time you've got through the uh, through the introduction to it. Okay. Well. Uh, Seth Rollins comes out first, because obviously why wouldn't the champ come out first? The... this was... I think this was a... no, it was not a ladder match, never mind, that's Money in the Bank. Uh, Ambrose comes out with a big pop, and the commentary immediately start burying Dean Ambrose. They, for some reason, mention the Iron Sheik, and JBL shouts that J&J security were trained by M6. Not MI6, M6, the highway. But uh, the match begins and the crowd start chanting Justin Bieber at him. Or start chanting just Justin Bieber at Seth Rollins, which is like, no, fuck off, don't do that. 
This was like a entirely just wrestling match between the two of them. Dean Ambrose hit some really awesome moves. He hit a suicide dive from the outside, inside the ring, outside, and hit Seth Rollins over the table, which is pretty cool. Like he got so much momentum that he flew into the table. Uh, he killed J and J security more than once. Uh, yes, he did do that. Yes, he did. Did you even hear what I said? He killed J and J security. I almost said gay and gay security then, but that would have been derogative. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, I don't know where about you are though. Uh, I'm up to the bit where Seth Rollins starts power bombing Dean Ambrose into the barricades. Oh, oh! It was. Uh, it looked pretty painful. Sure. Is she talking about this this uh, pay per view, not next pay per view? No, I'm talking about Elimination Chamber. Uh, I can't find it. Well, I'll carry I've on. I've got then. the words cover uh, dash, cover dash, cover dash, cover written down. Is yeah, that... there was lots of like back and forth trying to pin each other. Which was awesome. Uh, there was a brutal clothesline by Ambrose onto Rollins. Like, I thought Rollins' like, neck was broken. Ah, it yeah. was pretty bad. Yeah, I have that. Uh, Ambrose went to do his rope thingy where he goes to fall out and then bounces back in, but Seth Rollins reversed it, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Did you notice uh, all the really bad like uh, shots that were out of focus of like really blurry close-ups of Seth Rollins' face? That kept happening. No, I I didn't recognize that. It was quite it was quite amazing. It would just be like they would zoom in really close to his eye, and then it would be all out of focus, and you just get a smear of cheek, and then it would pull out dead shaky. It was really weird. Uh, there was to, to close up the match. Dean Ambrose hit an elbow drop onto Jane J Security and Kane on the outsides. And then he went back to the ring and went to hit an elbow drop onto Rollins, who pulled the referee in the way. Yeah. The crowd immediately stopped booing, and Rollins starts getting the advantage again. He goes to hit a Phoenix Splash, but Dean Ambrose rolls out of the way. He hits the Dirty Deeds and goes for the pin. The crowd all start chanting, one, two, three, but the referee's out. A second referee runs all the way from the back. Counts the free count, and my reaction is, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dean wins? Question mark? Yeah. I was over the moon. I was like, holy shit, Dean Ambrose won. So was I. And, and I just couldn't believe it. I was freaking out. And then, of course, WWE were like, I'm just going to like chop off your erection now while it's fully you know, erect. <laughs> because it's like that film Teeth, the- you know, the one with the uh, teeth vagina. Yeah, pretty much. Have you ever watched uh, that? It's like exactly what you're imagining, only with more teeth and less chopping things. <laughs> no, I haven't. But uh, of course, the referee that was knocked down by Seth Rollins gets up and says that he, Seth Rollins is disqualified for attacking the, or pushing the referee in front of Dean Ambrose's move. So yeah. Dean Ambrose wins, but it's by DQ. So Seth Rollins is still the champion. That's fucked up, dude. It's fucked yep, up. My reaction is, fuck you, WWE. Fuck you. That's like having the New Day win anything, basically. <laughs> uh, the crowd start chanting bullshit. It's pretty good. Uh, then J&J Security, Kane, and Seth Rollins start beating up Ambrose. And then, of course, baby girl Roman Reigns comes down to save his friends. Yeah. They clear house, and Ambrose picks up the championship. And g- grabs a mic and says, hey baby, baby, I buy the beers tonight. And then he leaves with Roman Reigns through the crowd. <laughs> Weird. But not a shitty ending, I guess. Now, what did you give this match? I gave it a 4 out of 5. I liked it. I also gave it a 4 out of 5. I don't agree with the ending, but it was pretty good. The ending, the part where he, uh, it was a disqualification, was really shitty. But I thought the part where they had like Roman Reigns run in and actually do something and then just run out again was... Well, it was all right. It was a good way of uh, ending that shit. <sighs> I'm just upset that once again Dean Ambrose has been reduced to stealing titles. I know that's he... what he did. That's what he did building up to uh, WrestleMania. He stole the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, was that from Bad News Barrett? I mean, that really awkward. Yep. Uh... Yeah, yeah. But that was Elimination Chamber. We were a bit late covering this, but. I think you can forgive us and that it was a really shit show. Yeah, it was like, you don't want this coverage. We didn't want to do it. And then we were busy. I wanted to do it as soon as it happened, but we were busy, yeah. Yeah, it took me a while to watch it, and then we just had like shit like E3 in the way and stuff. 
and uh, here we are weeks later. But yeah, in case you missed it, it was a steaming pile of shit. There were only two good matches in it, and that was Kevin Owens, John Cena, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose. Everything else was just kind of mediocre and bad. I mean, <laughs> at least still hanging from the top of the cell was hilarious in its own special way. I don't know. The Ascension picking up El Torito and launching him like a lawn dart at Kalisto was also pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was the Elimination Chamber. Absolutely. The special network-only pay-per-view that wasn't very good, even though I was super hyped for it. I know, you told me like it was going to be the best shit ever. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you better be. But I guess that'll do us. Join us for whenever we cover Money in the Bank sometime in two months. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Wait two months. Check back. Then we'll have more videos. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep.